Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to move the following motion standing in my name. Whereas by Section 4 of the Economic Sanctions Act, Chapter 81, Number 5, the President may, for the purpose of implementing a decision, resolution, or recommendation by a regional or an international organization of states or association of states, of which Trinidad and Tobago is a member, that calls on its members to take economic measures against a foreign state make an order with respect to A, the restriction or prohibition of any of the activities referred to in Section 5 in relation to a foreign state, B, the season, freezing or sequestration in the manner set out in the order, any property situated in Trinidad and Tobago that is held by or on behalf of one, a foreign state, two, any person in that foreign state, or three, a national of that foreign state who does not ordinarily reside in Trinidad and Tobago. C, the exclusion of any person, property, goods, technical data, services, transactions, ships, or aircraft, or any class thereof from the application of the order. And whereas there is grave concern about the extremely high levels of gang violence and other criminal activities, including kidnappings, trafficking in persons, and the smuggling of migrants and homicides, and sexual and gender-based violence, including rape and sexual slavery, as well as ongoing impunity for perpetrators, corruption and recruitment of children by gangs, and the implications of Haiti's situation for the region. And whereas the illicit trafficking and diversion of arms and related material of all types contributes to undermining the rule of law and respect for human rights, and can impede the provision of human humanitarian assistance and have wide-ranging negative humanitarian and socio-economic consequences. And whereas the need to prohibit the transfer of small arms, light weapons and ammunition to non-state actors engaged in or supporting gang violence, criminal activities or human rights abuses in Haiti, as well as to prevent their illicit trafficking and diversion. And whereas the situation in Haiti continues to constitute a threat to international peace and security in the region, and whereas the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is required by virtue of its international obligations to prevent and prohibit illicit financial flows, trafficking and diversion of arms and related materials of all types, illicit transfer, destabilizing accumulation and misuse of small arms and light weapons in all respects, which pose threats to international peace and security, cause significant loss of life and contribute to instability and insecurity in the region. And whereas the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is a member of the United Nations, and whereas the United Nations Security Council has issued Resolution 2653 of 2022, requiring members of the United Nations to impose economic sanctions against entities and individuals listed pursuant to United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 concerning the Republic of Haiti. And whereas by virtue of its membership of the United Nations, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is required to implement United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 of 2022, issued by the United Nations Security Council concerning the Republic of Haiti. And whereas it is necessary to take measures to ensure compliance with our international obligations. And whereas the President signed the Economic Sanctions Implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 on the Republic of Haiti, Order 2023, on the 6th of June 2023, published as Legal Notice Number 168 of 2023 on the 12th of June 2023. And whereas the President, in accordance with Section 44 of the Economic Sanctions Act, Chapter 8105, did cause to be delivered on the 13th of June 2023 to the Speaker for presentation to the House of Representatives, a statement setting out the specific grounds on which the decision to make the order was based. And whereas the statement of Her Excellency the President was debated in the House of Representatives, on the 20th of June 2023 and approved and published as legal notice number 193 of 2023. And whereas section four, subsection three of the act provides that subject to section four, subsection five, 
an order made under section 41 shall unless previously revoked remain in force for three months and whereas section 4 subsection 5 of the act provides that before the expiration of an order made under section 43 the order may be extended either indefinitely or for a specified period by a resolution supported by a simple majority vote of the House of Representatives. And whereas United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 remains in effect, and it is essential to ensure that Trinidad and Tobago's obligations are encapsulated in law and compliance is maintained pursuant to the mandates therein and the requisite sanctions regime. And whereas the continued implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 is critical in furtherance of the restoration of peace, security, and stability for the Republic of Trinidad, of the Republic of Haiti. And whereas it has become necessary to extend the life of the order until such time as it is revoked, be it resolved that the order shall remain in force until such time as it is revoked. Madam Speaker, this motion is premised on the requirement for Trinidad and Tobago as laid out in the body of the motion to continue the implementation of United Nations Security Council number Security Council Resolution number 2653 as a member state of the United Nations and in alignment with our obligations in that regard. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago as a member of the United Nations is bound by specific international obligations as mandated by United Security Council resolutions, and in the particular case of our Caribbean Haiti, this includes Security Council Resolution 2653 of 2022. This House will recall, Madam Speaker, Article 2 of the United Nations Charter stipulates that in order to ensure that the rights and benefits resulting from membership are granted to each member state, all members, shall in good faith fulfill the obligations assumed by them in accordance with the present charter. United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 mandates member states to ensure that all measures taken by them to implement this resolution comply with their obligations under international law, including international humanitarian law, international human rights law, and international refugee law as applicable. On the 21st of October, Madam Speaker, 2022, the United Nations Security Council adopted the very resolution 2653. And in this regard, for an initial period of one year from the date of adoption of that resolution, all member states are required to take the necessary measures in respect of individuals and entities designated by the committee to, pro to impose travel ban, asset freeze, and targeted arms embargo. The designation criteria are set out in paragraphs 15 and 16 of the United Nations Security Resolution 2653 in respect of individuals and or entities which are responsible for or complicit in or are engaging in directly or indirectly actions that threaten the peace, security or stability of Haiti. And I don't need to set those out in detail. The particular designations are lettered A to, to H of paragraph 16 of United Nations Security Resolution 2653. As this House will recall, Madam Speaker, the Economic Sanctions Act, Chapter 8105, is the legal basis of the laws of Trinidad and Tobago, upon which Trinidad and Tobago can implement resolutions made by an international organization of states of which Trinidad and Tobago is a member and call, which calls on its members to take economic measures against a foreign state. As such, the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago has taken all appropriate steps to ensure compliance with our international obligations. In this vein, on the 6th of June, 2023, the statement of Her Excellency, the President, in accordance with Section 404 of the Act, setting out the specific grounds on which the decision to make the order was based, was signed. Thereafter, by Section 4 of the Act, the Economic Sanctions Implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 on the Republic of Haiti Order 2023 was promulgated as legal notice number 168 of June 12, 2023, 
so as to comply with the mandates of that Security Council resolution. Moreover, on the set on 20th of June, 2023, the statement of Her Excellency the President on the economic sanctions implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 2653 on the Republic of Haiti order was debated in this very House pursuant to Section 4, Subsection 4 of the Act. It is to be noted that by Section 4.5, an order made under Section 4, Subsection 4 shall, unless previously revoked, remain in force for three months. As such, given that the order was published on the 12th of June, 2023, the three-month period will expire on the 12th of September, 2023, in a matter of days. In this regard, Section 4, Subsection 5 of the Act provides that prior to the expiration of an order thereunder made, the order may be extended either one indefinitely or for a specified period by a resolution supported by a simple majority of the House of Representatives. In light of the fact, Madam Speaker, that the United Nations Security Council remains in effect, it is therefore now necessary to extend the Haiti Order 2023 to ensure Trinidad and Tobago's obligations are encapsulated in law and compliance is maintained with its international obligations in relation to the mandates and in relation to its Caribbean neighbor, Haiti. Taking into consideration, Madam Speaker, the international obligations and the legal framework which exists to implement same, the location of Haiti coupled with the regional risk and context, we are here therefore today to bring this motion before this Honorable House to approve the extension of the order at hand. Additionally, as a member state of the United Nations and based on the Charter, it is critical that Trinidad and Tobago continues to implement that Charter. Currently, the United Nations Security Council has designated already one individual according to the sanctions regime in Haiti, namely Jimmy Cherezier, also known as Barbecue. And based on the description in the, re in the annex of the resolution, Barbecue has engaged in acts that threaten the peace, security, and stability of Haiti and continues to plan, direct, and commit acts that constitute serious human rights abuses. It is therefore necessary to extend the Haiti Order 2023 until such time as it is revoked so that the prohibitions contained therein continue in effect to ensure technical compliance and implementation. It is further noted, Madam Speaker, that by a press release of July 31st, 2023, the, United Se the Security Council Committee reported that the chair of the committee briefed its members on his most recent visit to Haiti and the Dominican Republic during the period June 12th to 16th, 2023. The chair noted that his visit took almost seven months, took place almost seven months after the adoption of the resolution under which we move today, during a time when Haiti is facing major political, economic, security, and humanitarian challenges. And the visit helped to reaffirm the Security Council's resolution and the committee's engagement and commitment to working towards the restoration of peace and stability in Haiti. Importantly, the chair further expressed his view that the adoption of Resolution 2653 was a welcome initiative and there was a shared view among Haitians whom he met that the imposition of sanctions by the Security Council could contribute to improving the security situation. In light of the foregoing, Madam Speaker, today's motion is demonstrably evidence of this government's commitment towards doing its part to ensure the restoration of peace, security and stability for Haiti by upholding the implementation of its respective United Security Council resolutions and our international obligations. Madam Speaker, I beg to move.